Oh. <laughs> so as <gasps> what's in there? <gasps> oh my! We can't actually put that in the video. Hello, hello. Today we shall be reviewing the Morris 8. Yes, this particular Morris 8 is for sale with the motor shed. It's a 1935 Morris 8 Series 1, and it's one of the most important cars Britain has ever known. Indeed, it is at the height of automobile within the United Kingdom, and today we're going to be showing you how to drive it. Indeed, let's begin. So yes, here we are with the 1935 Series 1 Morris 8. It is actually a very, very important car. Just a few bits and bobs about the car. It's got a 920cc side valve, straight four. Three-speed gearbox, which we'll explain later. Mark uh, was saying to us that you can literally rebuild the car mechanically from the ground up with the user manual. Which is amazing. Which is amazing. Imagine that for the new AMG Project 1. <laughs> Here's the manual. It's literally 84 Building. books worth. Yeah, well, so this car, like you said, is for sale with Mark at the motor shed. So we've got all the bits that go with it. It's a great car and we're going to now learn how to drive it properly. Learn how to drive it properly and give you some key facts and stats. Yeah, because it's actually got uh, some amazing history. Some pretty interesting history that actually links to the day we're filming it. Yes. I'm loving the colour combo. I shall yeah. indeed have my next car. Yes, and we've got a few hours with this car, so let's... Get on and drive it. Let's drive it. Um, so, start the car. Would you like to point that in here? Yep. Turn your key for ignition. You've got a choke there, and this is a pull to start. Now, it was being a bit temperamental earlier, so I'm going to pull the choke out a bit. I'm going to give it a bit of gas. And just like that. You have a working car! There we go. Um, and again, like we said earlier, with the same as the Austin 7, first is where first would be. No, reverse is where first would be. First is down where second would be. Second is where third would be. And third is where fourth would be in a regular car. Doesn't it smell amazing? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Let's drive it. Bye. Yes, that's recording. Ooh, right. Right, here so, we are. Oh, it's snug. It is very snug. Look so, at this. It's actually very easy to get in because the door's open that way, so you can just fall in. Once you're in, and I shut this door, yeah, that's snug. It is snug. It's cute. No that's seat belts so again because they didn't need seat belts. But, relating to the point we're going to tell you in a bit, this was a car that actually s provoked some form of regulation within the United Kingdom. Here we go then, the Morris 8, the 1935 Morris 8. 8. What a wonderful what year machine. was the Austin we drove? 1928. 1928, okay, so in those nine years, just from driving it from the front of Mark's uh, workshop and background there, it feels another level of uh, refined. Yes, it does. The gearbox is just a bit easier to find its place. The clutch isn't just like a snap in. No, it's sort of, it's cool. sort of quite lenient. The throttle. There you go. Yeah, so that was, you know, com Very yeah, like simple. you said, compared to the Austin 7, it feels it a whole lot more feels refined. A whole lot more refined. And this is only nine years later. It is. It does feel a lot, it, it almost feels more snug than the Austin 7. Yeah, I mean, our arms are literally touching here. Yeah? Um, <laughs> it's actually got more room in the back than it does in the front because the rear is wider than the front. It sort of tapers inward towards the more front it goes. So you've actually got loads of room in both leg room and sitting room. Yes, so, shall we talk about what we, were going, what we briefly touched upon earlier and that was the regulation that this car introduced. Within the United Kingdom, I don't know whether this oh, yeah, is different from anywhere else, Kingdom. but definitely for the UK, uh, and it was a UK car. So, in 1935, this car sold so well, I think, that the United Kingdom government decided to introduce the first driving test. 
you had to pay an additional 39p 37p 37 pence to do the driving test and do you know the day in which they brought that rule in and we kid you not we did not time this the 1st of june 1935 and the day we are filming this is the 1st of june 2022 and the scarier thing is and we are we are not like no we, we promise we're not making this up. truth he just at the computer went oh my god we found this information out when doing research for this car at 9 35 in the morning that's what the time read so yeah so this car was so popular and it, it was cheap, it, it, it cost anywhere in between 118 and 142 42 pounds to have the car. And I think the UK government realized that because they were such a success and that people were gonna drive them, why not introduce a test to ensure that idiots don't buy them <laughs> and crash them into things? Absolutely. And the even funnier piece of information about that is, Back then, when you were taking your driving test, you actually had to drive to the instructor to pick and them pick up. pick them up. You would often pick them up outside a parish hall. Yes, or, or you know, a church uh, or something church, like that. something religious. Um, right, so I'm now going to hand the keys over. And uh, Where should we go? Where would you like to go? Let's get it out on the road. Um, the handbrake is... Do you know what? I'm just going to take this off here and just show you the handbrake. How high it comes up. Yeah. So little mirrors yeah. there. And here's the handbrake, it's down here, and it's lever in all the way up. It that, does that, come that up that quite really high, doesn't it? And I think this should just... Should it just? Ah, there's a little... Ah, uh -huh. uh -huh. so unscrew yeah. that. Yeah. So don't do it at the... Ah, and there's the other camera. But yes, there we are. Let's take it out onto the road. Need to find out where the trafficators are first. Is it that? Is it this? Trafficators? No idea. Oh, oh, hey, wow, yes it is. Up. So look, so instead of indicators, you had trafficators. So if I flick that that way, there you go, that flicks up like that and then back down on the other side. So cool, let's get it out on the road. Let's go. Yay. Um, the design floor I'm noticing is the window winders can only be operated by your opposite hand because your your actual hand <laughs> doesn't, fit in, the doesn't gap. fit in the gap. So you can't get through. So this car does have a petrol gauge, a petrol needle, much like a, a modern car. And it's holding a lot more accurately than others I've seen. It's yes. not bouncing around over the place, but it does just say a uh, Corsa, which I don't really, doesn't look like there's masses of room for a fuel tank. So a Corsa could literally mean 10 miles of range. I don't really want to run out of fuel in it. So I've decided to take it more townward this time. Yeah, we're going into town in the Morris Age. Into town in the Morris Age. Uh, wipers? Are they a thing? I don't think it has any. I think it has one at the top. What is it? Yeah, how you get that to work, I don't know. So this car is for sale, I think, for just over £8,000. So it's a way to get into a pre-war car. Yeah. It's a brilliant little thing. It's a lot of car for that money when you consider the feeling of this. And it looks great. Like, we will be driving through town now, and people will just be like, it, it stands out so much, it looks of like a different time, it's tiny, no one has a burgundy car anymore. <laughs> Brakes are... Squeaky. <laughs> yes, they are. There you go. A boy just pointed at it and waved at yeah, it. He likes yeah. the Morris 8. Either that or... <laughs> There you go. So for eight thousand pounds, you can feel like a hero. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, what a fantastic little machine this is. Yeah. And because this car was so popular, a lot of people probably recognise it. Um, yeah, their granddad or great granddad may have had one. I don't know. That's why we are really, really getting into our older cars because it is such a pleasure just to poop. So yes, picture this, it's 1935, you've just passed, you've just picked your driving instructor up, passed your driving test, and this is now your freedom. I mean, this is the first time we've been in a pre-war car on the road, actually. Oh yeah, because we never actually got to take the Austin 7 Having driven this on the road now, not too sure I'd want an Austin 7 on the road. No. Um, I'd like a safe field in which I can drive it around and not worry about it. Other road users uh, in modern day cars don't understand the, the difficulty of 
what driving one of these is like. You have to think about everything 10 times more. You have to just be slow with everything you do and that can probably get on their nerves because driving is a conscious thought in a car like this. No, see, you can't go there. In a normal car, you would have been able to leave there. You need a proper, proper gap. Because if anything goes wrong, if you stall it or you miss a gear change or whatever it is, you, you can't act fast, as it were. Driving this car, don't drive it if you have anywhere to be. It, it should be for pleasure alone, and for that, it's cool. Because you feel great, because you're driving a black and burgundy car that looks from a lost time. Yeah. You get to wear a flat cap, dress a shirt, and everyone gets it. And Silenthia. Yeah. When you're in cars like this as well, when you turn the engine off, there really is like a, it's like turning the extractor fan off from the kitchen. <laughs> there is sudden, actually a moment of mm, oh. calm. Let's go have a look at some history. So one, one thing that this car is actually offered with is a big book of history. Uh, and it's got everything. I think this is literally like the original. Look at that. That's your original book that came with the car in 1935. So this is that's the book 90 years can... old worth of paper, even to the point of like, look, it's got proper. So that's the book that you can rebuild it from the ground up. Yes. With. So Mark said you can literally rebuild this car from the ground up with just this book. It had a complete restoration in the or body res restoration, wasn't it, in the 80s? So these. Oh, the These photos. are photos from its restoration. So that was it. That was the kind of barn it was kept in. Uh, look at that. When you consider from this all the way to that. Wow. See what you get in an eight. What specification, specialization. Oh, look. Oh, look, there's the original price there breakdown. An original price breakdown. If you don't buy a Morris, at least buy a car made in the United Kingdom. That's wow. cool. They don't do things like that anymore, no, they do don't. they? Um, but that's very cool. The thing that we're telling ourselves with all of these things is we have such a sort of tainted view of how cars should drive today. Because let's be honest, people who drive a manual these days think it's hard work. Once they get an automatic. So when you drive cars like this that actually require thought process, and I know that wasn't the case when they were new, but like it's... It's a readjustment to understanding that, of course, they're not going to drive anything like it, but that's not the point. You're buying these for an emotional reason to give you a bit of old timey. It's like your watch. It's like having a vinyl player. It's like having something that isn't as effective these days, but has character and soul. And this will exist. This will last for more years than your average Astra, because why on earth? Who's the guy who's going to crush this? Hmm. It's that's never going to happen. It's going to exist for a long time, as long as there's people to take care of them. Do you know what I mean? They have a completely separate place in people's hearts, and I like that. From the example of we have drove through Bista, and within two minutes we had a kid go, sick. <laughs> <laughs> like, that doesn't happen anything else, and that alone is why you should buy a Morris 8. Thank you very much for watching that's our, all from us. our little poodle around the Morris 8. And we'll see you in the next video. We will. Goodbye. <laughs>